I'm addressing to you to provide us with roof and slate to cover the roof of the house. The house was damaged during artillery bombardments on July 5th. Roof and slate was strongly damaged. Two small children live in this house. Volochayev and Aida Nikolaevna, such statements. For example, there is a photo how it was originally and how it was repaired. We collect the data. Near 200 houses were completely destroyed in Slavyansk. And we assist people. We try not only to give a person what he needs, but also to show his responsibility here. For instance, we say we will give you roof and slate for your house, but there is an old woman with no roof either. We will give the material to her as well, fix the roof for her, and we will give it to you. Two deacons and two pastors' sons were taken away at this church at the end of service. On say they were killed the next day. They were tortured and then killed. And of course, then they pretend them alive and demanded ransom after their death. Who killed them and why? DPR's people killed them took away from, right from the church and accused them of providing food for soldiers. One moment. I just wanted to understand where is it. We were able to build series of camps all over the country. We have a big camp in Svetogorsk satellite. Approximately 250 people is permanently allocated there. We were transporting people from Slavyansk, now from Gorlovka. The bridge between Gorlovka and Nikitovka was blown up. And guerrillas relocated behind the bridge, while Nikitovka remained in neutral zone. Before Mayors, five last kilometers, Ukrainian checkpoint, after no one until Gorlovka, and Nikitov station is neutral zone. And we enter this neutral zone. Thus, we send buses there and people come out on foot. And these telephone numbers, you know, people started to give to each other. And we know that every weekday, sometimes even Saturday, from 9 to 10 buses arrives at the Nikita station and we transport all people. Do you know them personally? Of course, they were my friends, and one of them, Viktor Brodarsky. Eleven children left altogether. Can you imagine? Eleven. One of them had eight children, another three, and one was not married. One guy just got married and had no children yet. As I previously said, I think that the reason was ideological, because they were Protestants, but they say they were accused of helping Ukrainian army, fed them, brought products. I assume it could be true, because these guys were Ukrainian patriots, but I don't think that this is the reason to kill young people. This project has no chances to survive. And even if it is, this is a scary place. I will never want to live here if DPR rules here. Because this is scary. Because civilization will still win. The mind will win. We can't all the time. A person who destroys, how is he going to live further? I don't know how he will do it. I watched, my first thought was, this is the end, this is just, when they say what was original executive committee in Donetsk, I was watching how they broke everything with a joy. And one man stood there and said, guys, stop, please don't, it will belong to us. He was just wiped off with the crowd, because I grew up here in Donbass, and I know I will explain. We had a tradition at school. I lived in Zorinkstown, Lugansk region. School tradition was to beat someone every day. And Donbass. 
I'm asking why we should beat someone every day. Because this is our culture. You may dare say that this is not like that. This is our culture. And therefore, it is better not to show off that we're so cool. Why we're cool? Did we create iPhone or Mercedes? Then there will be no sick desire to make people pay attention to us. Everybody would hear us. Everybody would see that we are cool. Do you understand? The problem is we have nothing to say, nothing to show. And we have shout, listen to us, or we'll beat you. We'll smash your face if you don't listen to us. Do you understand? This is the problem.